Okay, so what we have here is a circuit board, <laughs> as you can see. This circuit board is made by um, someone named BWAC. Um, so, in essence, it acts as a middleman between your power supply and your Commodore 64. The older power supplies, being 40 years old or whatever they are, are susceptible to having spikes on the 5 volt rail. So they say, I have yet to see that, but you know, to err on the side of caution is always prudent. Um, so what will happen is if your power supply goes beyond like five and a half volts, this thing will stop the five volts from continuing. So, um, and then if it falls below the five and a half volts and it'll keep, keep it going again. Um, that's what this board does. So it regulates, it, it keeps an eye on the peak voltage on the five volt rail. This is a through, um, um, a through hole board, meaning we have components that are like this size that we're going to be populating with. Um, there is also an SMD board that uses SMD components, which are a lot smaller. And there's also an add-on board. What the add-on board does, so when this, the voltage goes above five and a half, this stops sending the five volts. And then you'll see that because I'm going to demonstrate that for you. But when it starts dropping below five and a half volts, it'll keep sending the five volts again. The add-on board, basically, when it reaches over five and a half volts, it'll stop the five volts and it'll stay stopped. Even if the voltage drops back down again, it'll stay stopped until you um, start it up again. That's what that add-on board does. I'm not doing that. First of all, I built my own power supplies and I'll leave you links, two links where you can build your own. You can build one really cheaply with two wall warts that you can find like at Goodwill or something. Um, but I'm going to do this because a lot of folks, listen, people are so flippant sometimes and saying, well, you know, you got a new Commodore, dump the old power supply. It's going to be bad. Uh, you know, buy yourself a new one thinking that you can just throw out 60 bucks or 50 bucks, you know, um, and just buy a new power supply. Um, you know, some people are on tight budgets, so they don't have that money. So in this case, this will protect you from those spikes and this will cost you, there is a user on Etsy that sells everything, the board, the parts, everything for like $14 or something like that. Some inexpensive price um, compared to what you would have to spend in time and money in hunting down all of these parts. I think it's a killer deal. I don't know the person. I don't monetize my videos. Even if I put links to products, I don't monetize them. Don't need to, don't want to. Um, so I'm just going to leave his link on there or the Setsy seller's link on there. So you can, um, you know, take a look if you want to go this route. Um, that might be the way you want to do it because he also sells completed units, complete with the box. I 3D printed my own box, so complete with the box and everything. So anyways, that information is all in the description. Let me build this thing so you can see how this works. And then it's up to you whether you want to buy a $50 power supply or whether you want to buy these over voltage protectors um, or build your own. So just one more alternative and that's what I'm here for, just to provide alternatives. Could care less what people like or dislike my videos. All I'm doing here is providing people alternatives and it's up to you how you want to pursue. So let's get down to it. Let me get this thing built here um, and then let me show you how it works and then you will be all of them much more knowledgeable. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to time lapse this, um, so I'll keep my mouth shut and stop rambling.
Okay, that's pretty much it for the components. Now what you're gonna do is those long wires that were part of the resistor that we cut off, you're going to want to take two of them and you're gonna jumper four pins or four, yeah, four pads down and four pads across. So you'll see what I mean in a second here. Okay, you see one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You're gonna do that on both sides. Okay, so that is it. That is your whole board basically, pretty much. Okay, so the only thing that needs to be added then is four, two four wire leads on each side. And those will go to the four pins on the DIN plugs. So the, there's two pins for nine volts AC and there's two pins for five volts. Okay, so we'll get to that in a second. For now, let me show you how this thing works. Okay, so let's go over to the power supply here um, before we put, finish putting this together. But you saw how fast it goes together. It's, it's, it's not bad at all. It's a great project if you want to want to do something that's um, small enough scale. I think the hardest part for anybody starting out is maybe soldering the MOSFET in. Um, the thing that we did in the beginning here, basically I think you saw what I did. You just need a lot of flux underneath it and start the solder underneath it. And once you heat it up, it'll get soldered in place. I don't have steady hands, so the biggest thing is just trying to keep it steady <laughs> so it stays on the pads. All right, let me show you how this thing works. And, uh, and we'll take it from there. Stay tuned. Okay, so let me show you how this little circuit works. Basically, we're going to be putting in a DIN plug on this side and that's coming, your power supply is gonna be plugging in here. And your power supply should be feeding five volts to the computer. We're gonna put a DIN plug out here for your computer um, that goes to your computer. And so this plug here is gonna go into your computer. So five volts is coming in and it's gonna go through the circuit and it's gonna go into your computer and everything is, is gonna be fine and dandy, right? So let me show you. Okay, all right. So right now I have five volts coming in and five volts, this is the output, five volts going out. Everything is great. But what happens if you go beyond five and a half volts? Watch what happens. Look at this power supply here on the left-hand side, and you're going to see I'm going to be increasing this to 5.5. There's 5.4 volts so far. Now I'm reaching kind of like that little bit of a danger zone. And as soon as I hit 5.5, five, look what happened here. It, the voltage dropped. It dropped half a volt and basically disappeared. So this circuit cut off the voltage at 5.5 volts. So you're not feeding any more than that to your computer, which would potentially fry your chips. So that's what this does for you. Now, earlier I alluded to an add-on board um, for this that you can build as well. What that add-on board does, it has a little relay. And so basically if it reaches five and a half volts, it'll shut everything off, but it won't turn anything back on even if the voltage comes back down again. You notice on this, if I bring the voltage back down, that it started supplying the voltage again. So if you choose not to, you know, if you want to manually bring it back online again, so to speak, um, then that add-on circuit's what you want. But with this, you don't, you don't, you know, you should be pretty safe with just this one little tiny board. So what we'll do is we'll add an LED to it, you know, just to show you that it's, that it's on and that it's feeding and the LED will go off, you know, when, uh, you have a voltage spike. That's basically what this little board does, how it protects your computer. So let's go ahead and finish this whole little project up and, uh, and then we'll have a quick summary and we'll call it a day. All right, so stay tuned. Okay, so let's get the, this is the female plug. I have it plugged into a male plug so I can hold it much easier on the alligator clips. Also, I took out the pins that aren't needed. I don't normally do that. I'm just doing this for this video, just so you can see which pins are being, um, are being soldered onto here. It's the top, so here's the notch on the top. So it's the top two pins that are um, nine volts AC. Doesn't matter, plus or minus, because it's AC. And then um, 
the pins five and two, which are the very bottom one, and the one, if you're looking at it from the rear, the one to the right of it. Um, so um, pin five, which is the one to the right of it, um, that's going to be um, your positive five volts. So we'll make that a red. And then the one in the middle, which is pin two all the way to the bottom from the notch, that's going to be negative five volts and we'll make that black. That way on the other side, we'll know very easily what's what. Okay, so got all the pins soldered in. So we can put this together again now. So these two little tabs here have to go in to the recesses just like the other one. do now is I'm going to plug this in like so and I'm going to tone this out to make sure that the red here goes to the red here I'm making the assumption that we wired this up correctly <laughs> so tone here okay so the five volts is red here in the bottom and it should tone out with the red here at the top and it does and none of the others tone out with it so that means there's no shorts and we're good to go. I got the output here soldered in. And then I also soldered in an LED. So we'll, this LED will come out the side of the case. And underneath the red um, sh uh, heat shrink here is, um, is a pull-down resistor, 470 ohm pull-down resistor. So this will fit in the case and then the LED will stick out the side. So let's go ahead and test this and see what we got. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put in five volts here, just like I normally would with the power supply. And then I'm going to increase the voltage. The LED should come on. I'll increase the voltage and the LED should drop off after I get to 5.5 volts. So Let's take a look and see if that happens. Okay, so let's give this a test. This LED should come on as long as we're in the five volt range or under five and a half volts, I should say. So normally we would be at around five, 5.2 volts. And that's what we're at right now. 5.2, the LED is on. So we're getting power, everything's great. And then as we increase and we go beyond 5.5, five, that LED should shut off. And that's where the cutoff voltage is. So you can see that's how the Commodore 64 is being protected from over voltage. Very nice. Okay, so I think we're ready to put this in the case and uh, wrap this up. So we'll be right back. Okay, so here's the final circuit board in the 3D printed box. And we're just going to put the cover on now and it should snap into place like so. Okay, there's our final box. So let's see if this green light comes on. If we plug in our Commodore power supply here. So 
Let's get this thing situated like so. So let me turn on the power and we should see that green light come on. And if it does, then we have success. There we go. So we have a voltage protector for our Commodore 64. Power supply plugs into here and this plugs into the Commodore 64 and you are all set. So I will leave you links in the description to where you can get the circuit board, the parts and everything. Again, there's a user on Etsy um, or seller on Etsy that sells everything complete so you don't have to hunt. But I will also leave you a link to BWAX GitHub page. Pretty happy with this and uh, I hope you got something out of it. You don't go, have to go and spend 50 or $60 on an external power supply and dump the stock one. Um, for most part, I've never had an issue with any of the stock power supplies. They, every voltage I've ever tested on them has always been around five volts. But uh, hey, you never know. So this is an assurance um, at a reasonable cost, like I said. Um, look in the description and, uh, and yeah, good luck to you. So like I always say, enjoy life. Live today like it's your last. All right. Peace out.